I got mine. I got mine. I got mine. I've got mine. Now what these men are bragging about that they have is my newly reprinted Men at Work book in paperback form. Thousands of men have committed to read this book to get insight on male excellence that God revealed to me years ago. I've spoken at men's conferences and retreats and I've taken the essence of those powerful times in ministry and capsulized them into this literary work. Now it's a manual for Christian manhood with simple truths that I've learned and have mentored men in for years. Well, what's in it? Well, it talks about a man and his maker, a man and his mountain, a man and his mouth, a man and his morals, a man and his maintenance, a man and his mistakes, a man and his mentor, a man and his ministry, a man and his money, a man and his mind, a man and his marriage, a man and his mantle. Ladies, make this investment in yourself to get an understanding of the male perspective and make this investment in the males in your life. Uh, get it for your husband, your son, your grandson, your nephews, or other meaningful men in your life. Men, you make this investment in your own life. It's simple reading and then you live according to God's direction, faithfully, lovingly, and spiritually, you'll be amazed at what's going to happen in your life. Now these are time-tested truths, and they are the real guide for spiritual and biblical masculinity that is just the mentoring that this new generation of men desire. Order yours today by simply texting BKIHBH to 71441. BK. There it is on the screen, B-K-I-H-B-H to 71441, and it'll be rushed to you today. program today. Listen, uh, thank you for being a part of uh, uh, this time of communication. The lesson today is going to be outstanding as we share with you the Word of God. I was uh, able to write thousands of faith-building letters to people uh, who were going through situations and many people said my letters arrived right on time to be that inspiration that they need. And so, listen, when you make that call to give me your prayer request and let me know that you want to be a part of this uh, awesome ministry of, uh, of, of correspondence where I write to you, share with you the Word of God, listen, you make the call. And uh, I, it's my joy to share with you insights from the Word of God that will bless your life. So when you see, you know, the spot comes up, hey, you make the call, you're going to be amazed at what God's going to do for you in the coming days. Now. On Monday nights on Facebook, our other virtual platforms, we literally have thousands of people who are able, I know you're watching this on television, but listen, we have thousands of people who gather with me for that maximized prayer moment where we had this big, massive prayer meeting with people literally all over the world. I want you to join. They're going to give you the information how you can join us there because it is amazing. It's amazing. Listen, I wrote the book on a faith for the supernatural. And if you ha don't have your copy, you need to get your copy. The copy comes two ways. You can get the copy uh, electronic file as well as you can get it in hard book. But I'm, I'm a hard book guy. I need mine in the hard book. Okay, we're going to go into the lesson. I'll be back midstream to give you some more information that I know will be. Life is a journey, and in life, there is no easier way to get to your destination than with a road map. Call 1-800-926-6526 to request your roadmap to victory by Bishop Hilliard. This roadmap has detailed instructions on moving from where you are to where God wants you to be. Call now, 1-800-926-6526 with your most urgent prayer request or faith situation and request your roadmap to victory and be on your way today. All right.
All right, now, it also, desire is also the product of education. And that is, when I'm exposed through education of other things, I can desire something I did not know before because I've been educated on it. Amen. Amen. So desire is the product of, number one, association. Number two, education. But then desire is also the product of impartation. Impartation, where the Spirit of God drops a desire in my heart. But for God to do something in the earth, he has to have somebody in the earth to work with. Because the only legitimate right to function in the earth is through flesh. That's why demons want to get control of folk, because they can't do nothing unless they can influence flesh to do it. Got it? So now, what God will do, and this is, what, this is how you want to build your relationship with him, he wants to find a partner in the earth that he can drop a desire in their hearts, and they will take that desire, incubated by faith, and cause something to happen, cause his will to happen. Now, it, you, you got to understand, it's not always with, with, with a thing. It may be that God wants a person encouraged. And he drops a desire in your heart to encourage them. You, you follow me? And you can't pay, no, I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that. I ain't no preach. I ain't going to do that. Uh-uh, no. No, 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 no. You got to start with the little things. You know, I've been teaching around the country. God wants you to be a paymaster. And uh, the, the moment I say that, people think of big things. And I'm going, no, 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 no. God starts with the small things. He starts with telling you to get somebody a pair of your shoes that you like. Not, not the ones you don't like, see, not, not those. You easily get those. Well, yeah, baby, you can have these. They hurt my feet anyway. They hurt my feet. But the one you like, it's when God tell you, okay, I want you to give that away. Because before people can get blessed, now, I believe Bridget is OD'd on that one. I tell you, she just totally OD'd on giving us stuff away. She just, Lord Jesus, she just gives, she gives, she gives, she gives. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think it. Well, I ain't going to get into that. Let me move on. <laughs> but, the, but the point is, what God wants to do is he wants to find people he can talk to so he can give blessings through them. Amen. Remember Luke 6, 38 says, Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give. So God's got to find somebody he can work through. Amen. Amen. And like I said, it's not all the time some big thing, you buying somebody a house, you buying them a car. Many times God's going to start testing your obedience with something real simple but important. Amen. Look at the person that say, pass the test, pass the test. Pass the test, pass the test. Amen. Now, so desire is the product of association. Desire is the product of education. And desire is the product of importation. Now, when we look at the Bible, we can see in the Bible uh, there are believable documentation of exceptional living. Moses overcame uh, a whole lot to become an emancipator and made a difference in the earth. Jabez, you know, his story, he, he was born and he, his mother called him sorry, but he overcame all of that to make a difference. Amen. Through his prayer life. Nehemiah uh, overcame a lot so that he could make a difference. So we're talking about an exceptional life. I want you to understand we're talking about you living your life where you make a difference in the earth in somebody else's life. Amen? So David rises from obscurity. His daddy didn't even think he had king potential. He didn't invite him to the party. When the prophet came over to anoint the king, his daddy didn't even invite him. But he overcame all of that, made a difference in the earth. Then there are some, what I like, and you can probably pull people up in your life who made a difference, who influenced you, either by their association, uh, you know, by their example and that sort of thing. When I think of influences, first person I think of is my daddy. Amen. And, and my daddy wasn't a, wasn't a you know, sold out Christian. He didn't get saved really until, you know, maybe a couple of years before he died. Uh, but my daddy gave me an example of hard work and work discipline and respect. You know, you can't discount that. Yeah, I met a whole lot of other people, but I wouldn't have been open to them had it not been for my father. Right. Why? My father took me and my brother on a ride one day. Uh, you know, they, they call it the homeless now, but we, they called it Skid Row back then. 
took me out on schedule, us on schedule and said, son, I don't want y'all to be like that. I don't want y'all to grow up be like that. He said, uh, I, think my, I forget, I think my dad maybe had a sixth grade education, something like that. He said, uh, there's, uh, there's only so much I can teach you. Others will come into your life. Respect their time and don't waste their time. Amen. Got it? So when I began, to, when I came in contact with others, I could hear my daddy say, don't waste their time. Others want to invest in your life, don't waste their time. Another difference maker in my life was Miss Rachel Richards. I wouldn't be born again at the age I got born again had it not been for her. Now, this was in the days when they didn't, you know, they didn't accept women preachers in the Baptist church. Right. Didn't accept them at all, but she used to preach anyway. So she preached at her house. <laughs> ah, she preached at her house, and she, and she uh, enticed her congregation to come with cookies and Kool-Aid. Hey. <laughs> Difference maker, amen. Told me about Jesus, I got on my knees in her house and got born again. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So, uh, you know, we got some historical difference makers, but we also have some contemporary difference makers. And, uh, of course, I could go on, Dr. C.L. Jackson, Dr. O.C. Johnson, a whole lot of them, I may get into them a little bit later. But the whole point is, are you making a difference in anybody's life? Amen. Or are you just sailing through life yourself? And that's, that's the thing. You, you got to understand, God wants you to do more than suck up air and eat, you know, chitlins. I ain't mad with you eating your chitlins. I'm not upset. But listen, I'm telling you, God wants you to do more. And it starts with simple things. Amen, amen, amen. All right, now, so let's look now at the invitation that we see in the Bible. There's an invitation that we see in the Bible. Uh, beyond, like I said, we are, we are inspired by others. Inspired by, if I start talking, I can, I, my list is so long because there's so many people who made an impact in my life. Dr. Price, uh, we, Apostle Price. Now, uh, uh, I could just, oh, oh my God, I didn't want to go there. I didn't go there. Uh, but so many people, I saw them make a difference. That's, that's the key. It, it wasn't their stuff, but I saw their life had meaning. Because when you talk about getting stuff, I could see folk in the world who had stuff. But I saw people whose life had meaning, watch this, and they were fulfilled in life. Because, you know, coming up in the industry, I saw a lot of folk who had money, but they weren't fulfilled. Frustrated, and, you know, and acting crazy. But I could see this fulfillment, and that picture is what inspired me. Go in the Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 28, because in the Old Testament, as well as in the New Testament, we have these, what I call the Old Testament sovereign invitation, the invitation to live this exceptional life. It's refreshing to know that God uh, himself offers every believer the opportunity to live this exceptional life, beyond mediocrity, but with meaning and with substance. So there in the Old Testament, uh, when um, Moses gives the law, the second issue of the law in Deuteronomy, makes this powerful statement. I'll read it there, but it's a powerful statement about life. And it shall come to pass, verse 1, uh, if thou shalt hearken to the, diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Now, I want you to understand, when we talk about the law, uh, you know, because of a lot of the grace teaching, I want to say, you know, ignore the law. No, I don't ignore the law, even though I can't walk in all of the law. Jesus did it for me. It gives me a right to everybody, everything that is promised to those who could. Did y'all understand that? Remember now, these promises are predicated on uh, doing all the commandments. Well, we can't do them all. Jesus did them all for us. So we have a right to everything in here because Jesus qualifies us. Amen. All right, now let's move on, all right? He says, I set thee on high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee, praise the Lord. Overtake thee if thou hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. Blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be uh, thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall uh, thou be when thou comest in, and when thou uh, goest out. And the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee 
they be smitten before thy face, and they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. That's for somebody in the house right now. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in the storehouses, that's your savings, and in all that thou settest thine hand to do, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou keep his commandments, if thou keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. So there is, he's saying, he's inviting us to have an exceptional life by letting us know what is possible for us if we'll obey him. Go with me now to Job 36 and 11. Job 36 and 11, looking at these Old Testament invitations to live an exceptional life. So I want all that God has promised. I want all that he says has been made available to me. And it's good to know it is based on scripture documentation. Amen. And that's what really, you know, you know, that's what really excited me years ago. I've always been a lover of the Word of God because I was taught that in my foundational uh, teaching from the Baptist Church. I was taught, you know, to honor and respect the Word of God. And so when I start finding all this stuff in the Word, man, that's when I got excited. All right, verse, verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their what? Years in pleasure. Another invitation that God is making to his people that you can live an exceptional life. Psalms 115. Now, I know some of y'all say, I already know that already. Okay, stay with us. I got something for you, too. But, you know, I got to teach the foundation because everybody don't know what you know. Amen. All right. Verse 12. Uh, the Lord <clears throat> uh, hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Amen. What an invitation. Praise the Lord. All right, now, so it's clear from the Bible, and of course, you know, the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a word be established. So we looked at some Old uh, Testament uh, scriptures. Now let's go to some New Testament scriptures. Go to John 15. John chapter 15, Gospel of John chapter 15. What I'm showing you from the Bible is the Lord lays these promises out. He, he's invitations out. Why? Because he wants us to um, take advantage of them. He wants you to mo want more for life, out of life, than just to, you know, exist. Praise the Lord. All right, now. So in John, the Gospel of John chapter 15, first let's look at verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ooh, look at this one. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, that's a powerful promise. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> All right, now let's drop down to verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Now that sounds like to me that God wants us to influence other people. Amen. He wants you to make a difference in somebody's life. And many times it's a word of encouragement. Many times it's just a touch saying, hey, you're going to make it. I'm praying for you. But you don't let those opportunities pass you by. Everybody say, make a difference. <laughs> I'm going to say something. I don't think, think she'll mind me saying it. But, uh, but uh, 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 Sister Jones called me the other day, and uh, there's a pastor she wants to sponsor to the conference. And uh, she called, you know, so we tell me she wanted to sponsor him. And uh, so, and it was, it was so good because, you know, um, you know, I've been, the kingdom paymasters of those who will obey God in small things. Yeah. Got it? And so uh, I told her, I said, give him my number and let him tell him to call me. And the young man called me. You're talking about needed that encouragement. I'm telling you, I'm talking about not encouragement for me. He needed the encouragement that somebody cared enough about him to pay his way to the conference. And watch this, and then reach out to the conference host to let me know that he was coming. And now a connection was made. I tell you, that young man cried on the phone. He was just so happy. But it never would have happened. It never would have happened if she had said, oh, that's all right. 
Somebody else to pray for him. I'm just, I just pray again. He ain't praise the Lord. Praise again. I pray that he come to the conference. I just, but she did more than that. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see, that when it comes to making a difference, you got to do more than just think a good thought. God wants to touch others, but he touches them through us. Can I get a better amen than that? All right? To go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you ask the Father, in my name, he may give it you. Amen and amen. All right, now, um, let's go to another passage. Y'all such a good class. I love this. We go to John 10, 10. Now, why do you want to go there? Uh, because even though we say it, a lot of people need, have not seen it in the Scripture because everybody haven't been in church as long as you're in church. Amen. John 10, 10. The thief cometh not before to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have right. life and have it how? More abundantly. More abundantly. God wants you to have an exciting life. Life for you as a believer ought to be more than life was for you when you were not a believer. Yeah. Amen. All right, watch this. Go with me, Bibles, to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, and we're looking at all of these invitations that Jesus made, God makes to us uh, to let us know that we ought to have a quality life, a distinguishable life, a life that makes a difference. All right, verse 15. And he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. Now, a lot of people want to see that go into all the world. They think that, but it, and it's not limited to this. Let's go to Africa. Let's go to India. Let's go here. Let's go there. Oh, that's good. That's good. But what about the world you have? See, all of us have a world, a sphere of influence. So he's saying, in your sphere of influence, on your job, around your friends, your neighborhood, that's where he's telling you to go. So before you start packing your bags to get to go to Africa, <laughs> or go to India, or go to Indo Indonesia, before you start packing your bags, God says you got a world you can walk to. <laughs> Amen, amen, and make a difference. Watch this. See, most of the people who come to God come to God because somebody invited them. Most of the people who come to the church come because somebody invited them. I think Dr. I said it a couple of weeks ago. We can double the attendance on a Sunday morning just by everybody bringing one person. See, it's not enough, so we're going to just pray for that section to be full. Yeah, praise the Lord. That ain't, that's not good enough. How, how our church grew in the beginning was because somebody told somebody. They went into their world. Amen. Look at the person and say, I'm going to make a difference. I'm, gonna make a difference. I'm going into my world. Into my world. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? That's, that sounds like making a difference. Amen. They speak with new tongues. They shall take up service. If they drink in the deadly things shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall what? Everybody said, now that's making a difference. All right, watch this. So then after, uh, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. Look at the person next and say, God wants to work with you. The Lord worked with them. What happened? Confirming the word with what? Oh, my God. That's, this is what making a difference is about. This is what li is living an exceptional life is about, is I make a difference in the lives of people when I change the trajectory of their lives by my influence. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And watch this. And God backs you up. He confirms the word with what? Signs. And you can't argue with the signs. <laughs>
The discount ends soon. We have slashed the price for the four-day Christian summer camp at Love City USA, making it possible for more teens to attend. Love City USA is in the shadows of downtown Houston, and it's a place of fun, fellowship, and faith with first-class air-conditioned dormitories, games galore, and state-of-the-art worship facilities. Teen groups are coming from across America to experience this amazing teen-sensitive spiritual encounter. For more information, go to lovecityusa.com. See your teen at camp. Well, we're going to break in this point. I want to talk to you about something that's very, very important and very dear to my heart. You know, uh, in 2020, God spoke to me about starting up HFU, Hilliard Faith University, a specialized university that helps the average person in a church. It helps you know how to help your pastor. And so I've got two major courses. One course is this leadership course. It just will help you know how to help your pastor in leadership, how to help your pastor develop excellence, how to serve. That's what it's about. And this course is it's a dynamic course. And literally, listen, listen, hundreds of people have taken the course. In fact, when we started, we had over a thousand people, a thousand students registered for that course. Then the second course that we have is the sermon preparation and presentation course. Oh my God, that's awesome. And uh, it's an exclusive course and I want you to be a part of it. Now, when you go through the course and go through all of the classes, I'm personal, I'm the teacher. After you finish, you take the test, we send you a beautiful certificate that you can display uh, with kingdom pride that yes, you are able to get through the course and now you, know, you have certification to serve the Lord uh, to his glory. So I want to invite you to do that. There it is on the screen, H-I-M-H-F-U.com. Do that and go there and get the information. And register for one of those courses. It's going to really, really bless you. All right, let's get back to the lesson. I'll be back with closing time. Y'all were a small class. I'm on my third point now. The insights into exceptional living. Let's get some insights into this, and then we're going to leave you, I think, with seven uh, uh, things that uh, you need to attributes. And you can use these seven things as a kind of a scorecard and check them off. Say, so, yeah, I got that. Mm, need to work on this. Mm, got that. Oh, I'm, I'm, I got to work on this. Praise the Lord. Now, Romans chapter 15, that's why the study of the Word is so important. And when we come for our Bible study, that's why it's so important, because we're about to learn something as we study the Word. Verse 4 said, For what several things were written aforetime were written for our what? Learning that we through patience and comfort of Scriptures might have hope. Might have what? Hope. Might have hope. We talked about hope. Uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Hope is my desire. So when I understand and I study the Word of God, it helps create a desire in my heart. Amen. Amen. So the things we're about to touch now, we believe that they're going to help, you know, uh, stir a desire in your heart. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. That we follow those who through uh, faith and patience. Oh, Y'all ought to know that one. Y'all ought to know that one. But let's go to it because this is a Bible study. And in a Bible study, what do you do? Study the Bible. Amen. All right. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 says, And be not slothful, but followers of them who through what? Faith, Faith and patience do what? Inherit the promise. Now, the, uh, the, uh, the scripture is so clear. Uh, uh, <laughs> the word follow here means to imitate, do it like somebody else. So we need examples. It's the order of God to teach us and to train us by example. Can we say that it's the order of God, order of God. to teach us yeah. and to train us yeah. by, example. by example? Now, while we're in Hebrews, go to chapter 13, and let's look at verse 7. It's the order of God to teach us and to train us by example. And we're thankful that God will put examples in our lives to inspire us. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. All right, look at verse 7, verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith, what? Following, follow, considering the end of their conversation or their lifestyle. So it says that I should follow those. And that's what good leadership is about. It will give you an example. Amen. And so when I think of some examples of my mentors, of course, you know, uh, all right, I'll go, to, I'll go to Philippians chapter 4 before we go there. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9. The mature believer learns 
uh, from those who live exceptional lives and don't despise them. You get jealous of folk you learn from. Them. Amen. amen and amen. All right. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, looking at all about the Bible. See, living a life of faith is so simple. Why? Because God just put all this stuff in here to let us know that it's not difficult, and he gives us example. Luke Paul says this, this to the church at Philippi. Those things which you have both what? Learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Ooh, that's awesome, isn't it? So he says, all you got to do is keep your eyes open. Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, he has living epistles. Yes. I mean, folk who live in that eye, you can see it's a, mm hmm that's what you do. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, and uh, uh, in the next, uh, next couple of weeks, we're going to have pastors come in. They're bringing their leaders and their church members this time from all over because the strategist convention is, is really being expanded where it's more than just for uh, pastors and church leaders. But uh, they're bringing their leaders. They're bringing their church. Why? Because they want to see. They want to see because more is caught than taught. Everybody say more is caught than taught. And so uh, when they come and they see, and of course we can be so very godly proud that over these nine months, the church has not diminished in its effectiveness. Amen. Better hand clap than that. Y'all can't pity pat on that one. No, no, no. In fact, you know, uh, many times, Allah, more than like many times, often uh, when a transition like takes place, the, uh, the predecessor can't, can't walk off the scene. Can't. He had to, he had to, he had to, you know, he had to share it because, you know, the, the, the successor ain't strong enough. Amen. Not the case here. Amen. Not the case. The now, I know she's sitting over there, but that girl could just flat out preach. Yeah. I'm telling you, just flat out bring it. I'm telling you. Just flat out bring it. I mean, with information, inspiration, impartation. Amen. And, uh, you know, there are pastors all over the country now who have said, who said, wait a minute, I, I, I never thought that my daughter could be my successor. But seeing what God's doing at New Light, I'm bringing my daughter, I'm bringing my family so everybody can see what's possible. Amen, amen. Now, so, uh, you know, um, uh, all of us are the sum total of what others pour into our lives that we choose to incorporate into our lives, all of us. I, I think I brought some more pictures. So if they can put, uh, start my picture, put my picture up here. Uh, of, uh, yeah, that's, that's my uh, pastor I grew up under, O.C. Johnson. And uh, uh, my God, he inspired me on how to love people. I mean, you talking about a person who loved people and loved to preach. Oh, my God, love preaching. I mean, our church was like at 7 o'clock in the morning. That's where our church was, 7 o'clock on Sunday morning. It's back to 7 o'clock on Sunday morning. But then he would go and preach at 11 o'clock somewhere, at 3 o'clock, so sometimes twice at 3 o'clock. And then he would come back for night service. Got it? And in the early days, I used to drive him, you understand? I'd drive him to 11 o'clock, you know, then I'd drive him to, to 3 o'clock, and he'd say, keep the car running, because he's going to go in there. He gonna preach it, he gonna tear the house up, and then, you know, here I am ready to take him to the next place. Then he would reward me on Sunday night, let me preach. Oh, yeah. Amen, amen. I ain't gonna say I wish he was tired. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I knew after he preached all the time, four times, I know sometimes, you know, he, he gonna let me pull it. Next photo, next photo, next photo. God sent me to this man, that's C.L. Jackson. God sent me to him. I'll never forget. God said, because God wanted me to learn, learn boldness from him. I got a demonstration. I don't, never, never knew anybody as bold as him. He said, if God said it, what you waiting on? Love, love soul winning. I mean, love people. He would go preach on the street, take his whole church on the street. I mean, I mean, of course, one time he had a large church in Houston, but he would take his choir on a flatbed truck, uh, Mike McKay, some of y'all may, may, may remember, he used to play for him years ago. Yeah, he was his musician. And they go out, deacons out there, they have, uh, uh, missionaries out there. One day he's preaching, and uh, we preach right in front of a nightclub. He preached for this nightclub. This prostitute come out, she's crying, and st standing there with her pimp, she's hearing the gospel, her heart's breaking. He leaves us, walks across the street, and snatches this girl by the hand, takes her from the pimp. 
tell the pimp you can't have her no more. I got her and God got her. See, some of y'all don't know nothing about the street. You don't do that. I'm standing there going, what manner of man is this? <laughs> amen, amen. Learn both. So one day I'm, I'm preaching in the projects. Uh, they're on uh, uh, West Montgomery Road, the projects. And uh, my God, I heard God tell me they had a crap game. So we should do, I preach, and then uh, we form a big prayer circle. I'm in the center. And then I make the call to get saved. If you want to get saved, join me in the center. You know what I'm saying? That was our, that was our, 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 our way of doing it. But there was a crap game going over here. The Lord said, go snatch the dice. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know nothing about the street, y'all. You better have Jesus with you. You better have Gabriel with you. You better have, you better have a host of the angels with you, and all of them better have their passports, you understand? So I heard him, I heard what God said. I walked over there, and he said, snatch them when they're rolling. And the guy threw the dice. I stepped in and grabbed them while they was rolling. Of course, you get everybody's attention when you do that. I said, brothers, I'm about to have a prayer circle over here. Can you give God 10 minutes of your time? I threw the dice down and started walking. Every last one of them followed me to the press, sir. <laughs> now, would have had that boldness if I not had an example. Y'all listening to me. Amen, amen. Next photo, quickly, quickly, quickly. That's A.L. Patterson taught me the studiousness and the articulation of the word. Next photo, next photo, next photo. Yeah, next photo. E.V. Hill. Yeah. See, a lot of folks don't know I used to work for E.V. Hill. Mm-hmm, work for E.V. Hill. Brilliant mind, my administration. Uh, uh, I learned how to multitask uh, 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 by, by, by walking in his shadows. I said one of these days I'm going to write a book about uh, in the shadows of greatness, but you know, and we talk about all these guys. Next, fa next photo, next photo, next photo. Oh, y'all know about them. That's Dr. Frederick, Apostle Frederick K.C. Price. Amen. I taught, I, you know, I, I, I learned from him the discipline of faith, not moved by what I see. Only about what I believe. Amen, amen. We walk by faith. and not by sight. Next photo, next photo, next photo. Yeah, Dr. O. Roberts. Amen. I learned from him. <laughs> oh, my God. I watched him, and I learned from him how to trust God. He just trusted God. When you read his story and understand his story, understand his life, and I, that's how I was able to build like I was able to build because he laid his hands on me. I said, I, 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 many of many, many, y'all may remember years ago, he came to preach for us. I was taking him back to the airport, and on the back to the airport, the Lord told me, we're sitting in the airport, the Lord said, the greatest build of your generation is in your midst. Listen to him. He turned with a twinkle in his eye, and he said, you about to build, aren't you, young man? I said, yes, sir, yes, sir. He said, uh, and then he began to explain to me how he built uh, ORU, how, how he built his partnership base, and how he built the city of faith, and he laid his hands on me. He said, you got it? I said, I got it. That's why I've been able to build without stress, strain, and struggle. Amen. Now watch this. See, these men made a difference in my life. I am obligated to make a difference in somebody else's life. Now everybody in here got a story. Everybody in here could put some pictures up there. But the, the thing is now you have an obligation not just to sail through life, but now you've got an obligation to reach out to somebody else. Amen. Amen. Let me give you these six things real quick. Number one, exceptional living discovers purpose. I need to understand my purpose, and my purpose is to live for a benefit outside of myself. Are y'all getting blessed off of this like I am? Uh, yeah, I live for a benefit outside of myself other than myself. Amen. All right? Number two is um, uh, exceptional living. We'll come back and teach them in, de in detail next time. Depends on the power. And that's not, not a dependent on yourself, but you depend on the power of God. It's a dependence and a trust in God's ability uh, to help you do what you need done. Exceptional living, number three, uh, delights in principles. In other words, uh, what, what excited me years ago, as I said earlier, I found out that this was not something that's unique to a person. Follow me? Living, making life, uh, living, uh, making, making a difference in life, living an exceptional life, even having your needs met and all that. It's not that God just, he picks out one, picks out another, picks, no, 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 no. It's based on principle living. 
and principles will work for whoever will work them. Amen. All right? So, number one, it, uh, 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 exceptional living discovers purpose. Number two, exceptional living depends on the power. Number three, exceptional living delights in principles. Number four, exceptional living requires determined perseverance. Everybody say determined Determine. perseverance. That is, you're going to live an exceptional life. You can't be a quitter. Amen. You cannot be a quitter. Amen. Now, will you feel like quitting? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. On my Facebook Live on yesterday. Any of y'all ever watched my Facebook Live on yesterday? Wasn't that thing good? Boy, I, I, I preached myself happy on it. I'm telling you, I talked about what you do when you feel like quitting. Yes, what do you do when you feel like quitting? Number one, you need some additional ministry. Yeah. <laughs> Go to church. <laughs> Number two, if you feel like quitting, watch this. <laughs> you need to need, need what I call some added meaning. What do you mean added meaning? I mean, Jesus was at the, uh, in the garden feeling like quitting. The Bible says, for the joy set before him. For the joy set before him. In other words, he quit looking at the cup and started looking at the joy. So when you feel like quitting, understand it's going to pay off. Quit looking at the trouble and start looking at the triumph. Look at the trophies. Everybody say, look at your trophies. When you feel like quitting, what do you have to do? You got to adjust your mouth. You cannot put your mouth in agreement with your feelings like quitting. <laughs> when you feel like quitting, what you ought to do? You need to alter your magnification. What do you mean? You got to magnify the Lord and not magnify the problem. Ah, and then finally, boy, y'all got to, finally, what you have to do is um, you've got to, uh, you have to, you have to, uh, Respect the agreement mandate. Everybody say agreement mandate. Agreement. Oh, my God. I'm telling y'all, y'all got to, my, whoo. Everybody say agreement. agreement. Jesus says, if two of you agree, yes. this is a law. Yes. He said, if two of you agree as touching anything, yes, yes, it'll be done. God says, I'll go to work if you can get an agreement. Yes. But what happens is the devil works overtime to keep you out of agreement. You got your feelings hurt. I mean, getting, I mean, he does. Because the law says if you just agree. So you tap a home by getting uh, your husband and wife out of agreement. Because he understands the power of agreement. Amen, amen. But he said, if I can just get two of you. Because then things happen exponentially. One chases a thousand, but two chases ten thousand. Now, looking at it naturally, if one can chase a thousand, you add another one, that ought to just be another thousand. One chasing a thousand, two ought to chase two thousand. But when it comes to the agreement, Something happens exponentially. You set something in motion when you agree. Watch this, watch this. And oh my God, if a prophet agrees with you. <laughs> if I say prophetic agreement. Let, let me move on, let me move on. I can't deal with that right now. Preach. I'm, next week I'm going to deal with that, I hope, in Jesus' name. All right, watch this, watch it. Exceptional living uh, has distinguished prosperity. If I say distinguished prosperity. Now, what is this thing with prosperity? They know they are blessed to be a blessing. Yes. They don't just get it and then, oh, bro, praise the Lord, I got my job, I want it, hallelujah, and then you don't ever see them at church anymore. <laughs> now, y'all laughing. No, but I understand I'm prospered to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Yes. Why am I not? Number six, exceptional living dismisses persecution. Folk are going to talk. Amen. That's one thing all my mentors taught me. They're going to talk about you. They are going to. The Bible says all that will live godly in Christ will suffer what? Persecution. So the persecution cometh. But God delivers us out of them all. Number seven. Y'all ready for this one? Exceptional living has disciplined posterity. Now what do you mean by that? If I say disciplined or discipled posterity. I love what God said about Abraham. He says, I know Abraham. He's going to train his household and his children after him. Mm, mm, mm. 
Psalms write and says, now, be sure to tell your children about the blessings of the Lord. That's in chapter uh, uh, Psalm 78. He says, so they'll serve God too. Amen. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. We have a responsibility when we live exceptional lives to pass it on. Yeah. 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 You got to pass it on, you got to pass it on. Now, watch this, what you sow into their lives, you got to watch this, uh, what you sow in that, into their lives is up to them to incorporate. So don't you leave out of here feeling that you've missed it because you've got a child that's wayward right now. The Word says, when they're old, they will not depart from it. The prodigal son's daddy did not frustrate himself, waiting on this boy to come back. He just kept on looking. Yeah. So some of y'all, your children have strayed away. Yeah. Just keep on looking. Yeah. I'm having the joy right now. Y'all see Ivan up there? Y'all see Ivan up there? You know, I kind of helped raise Ivan, you know, naturally. You know, not when Ivan said he's, going, he's a preacher. You know, I tried to talk him out of it, but he wouldn't let me talk him out of it. Because if I could talk him out of it, that means he ain't got it, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> and then, so we sent him off to Ramah. I said, oh, you need to stay there. It's two days. Because when you get back, Big Daddy, <laughs> Big Daddy going to not get involved in your life, involved in your training. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. That's why we got him sitting up there. Because <laughs> I, I, I'm training him, watch this, I'm training him to be my backup. Right. I trained his mama. She's doing pretty good. <laughs> But see, we got to get a joy. Some of your children ain't coming to church. You get on the phone and call them. They're not going to this church. They're not going to anybody's church. You get on the phone and call them. Mama praying for you. Mama, don't you just let them. I just, no, 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 no. You get on the phone. You got to make a difference. You're the difference maker in their lives. Can I close? Oh, glory to heaven. I close as a man who's walking on the railroad tracks. Some of my old members remember this story. He's walking on the railroad tracks. He got his luggage and everything. He's walking on the tracks. He come up on some ro ro railroad track workers, and they uh, ask him, man, what are you walking out here for with your luggage? He said, I got a ticket. I got a ticket. You can't put me off the tracks. I got a ticket. And so the, 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 the supervisor said, well, let me see your ticket. Read the man's ticket. said, man, wait a minute. This is a ticket to ride in the executive car First class. He said, yes. <laughs> he said, yeah, you don't have a ticket to walk. You got a ticket to ride. <laughs> when he discovered that, he perked up. He couldn't wait for the next train. He could hardly wait for the next train because he says, I don't need to be out here. Who am I talking to today? <laughs> when you discover all that God has for you, he didn't give you a ticket to walk. He's given you a ticket to ride. It's time to live an exceptional life. It's time to live on top. I'm out of time. Well, we're just about out of time for the program today, but I want to rehearse those things that I've asked you to be considerate of in the future. On Monday nights, I want you to join me. Oh my God, you'll see Monday night is so powerful. Uh, Monday nights at 7 p.m on uh, our social media platforms for the maximized prayer moment. I teach a lesson, then after I teach a lesson, we pray those points. Oh, it's been amazing. The testimonies are amazing, and I do it live. That's right, you can join me live with that, amen. And then the other thing, I wanna put in your hands this amazing matrix. Uh, this, it's called Faith for the Supernatural. In it, I record a whole lot of the testimonies. You hear me, a lot of people love the testimonies, and that's how we overcome. And I want to share that with you so you'll have, when I talk about the supernatural, I'm not talking about something spooky, how to get God involved in your situation. And of course, the investment is not that much. There's the information on the screen. Go online, you can get it two ways. If you go online, you can get it right away in a digital form. And, uh, and if you get both of them, you can get the digital form as well as the hard book Hard, hard book copy, hardback copy for a discount. I know you like a discount. And it talks about um, how, to, how to release your faith for God to get involved in your life through your prayer life, through your planning, through your perseverance. Oh my God, I'm telling you. And through your profession, how to confess God's word, how you proclaim the things of God 
and it is what I have done. It's kind of a catalog of my life and how you can get God working supernaturally in your life. Now, when we came on midstream, I talked about heal your faith universally. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Ta-da! <laughs> Uh, I came on talking about Hilliard Faith University. Uh, and of course, when you go out there and look at Hilliard Faith University, uh, you will see all of the classes that we have. You know, I have some of my master classes. Uh, amazing, amazing. All right, listen, I got to get out of here, y'all. But listen, I want to write to you my faith building principles. Uh, and if you'll pick up the phone, give, give me your prayer request, your prayer situation, your faith situation. Listen, I'll have my team pray for you. And then I'll begin to write you these faith building letters that will arrive right on time to stimulate your faith. And together, we'll be able to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. I need you to partner with me, if you will. And I got to tell you, when you partner with me, those that I touch, you touch. What goes on my record goes on your record. And hey, listen, we can make a difference in the earth. All right, you stay safe. You stay in faith. I'll see you next time. Life is a journey, and in life, there is no easier way to get to your destination than with a road map. Call 1-800-926-6526 to request your roadmap to victory by Bishop Hilliard. This roadmap has detailed instructions on moving from where you are to where God wants you to be. Call now, 1-800-926-6526 with your most urgent prayer request or faith situation and request your roadmap to victory and be on your way today. I'm sure you have seen the promotional spot that I've done for the Unlimited Potential Matrix that was released in October, and seriously, I think it's the most comprehensive literary work that I've done in the line of the Matrix products. It's 200 pages of revelation, inspirational information that will guide you in your pursuit of your sovereign potential. Now, the audio school in the Matrix has 34 or 35 teaching lessons that I handpicked to enhance your learning experience, which is said is valued at about $175. Listen, and it's free inside of the matrix. Now, it contains the answers that young people are asking, the answers to the questions that they're asking about success and God's plan for their lives. It is a special gift that we'll keep on giving. Now, in section one, I answer the question that people have about the salvation potential. I answer the question in section two about sovereign potential. In section three, I talk about the success potential. In section four, I deal with the spiritual potential. In section five, I deal with the uh, serving potential. And then section six, the social potential. Never before has there been one piece of my literary work that seems to cover all the bases about becoming all that God has planned for your life. Now, your special autographed copy of Unlimited Potential can be rushed to you at the retail price of $40 plus shipping and handling. I want you to text right now to UPMX to 71441 Order yours today and order the gift for someone you care about today. We're rushing right to you. Hello, I'm Apostle Wayne T. Jackson, the founder of the Impact Television Network, and I'm here to congratulate Apostle Ivy Hilliard for Love City, USA. This campground is next to none. I thank God that God has given this man the vision to carry out such a assignment when it comes to our youth. I have seen down through the years how God used Apostle to do so many things that have helped the body of Christ. Now, USA, uh, Love City USA is another a man assignment that God's given them and it is great. I sent my people down there on last year and they had an explosive time. I encourage you to lift up Apostle in prayer and also send your financial support to help this great endeavor. God bless you, Apostle. We do celebrate you and what you're doing for the body of Christ. God bless. There's an African saying that it takes a village to raise a child, meaning that 
It is the responsibility of all concerned to help bring a child to maturity. It has been the initial support of members and friends and partners of Love City Vision that has produced the massive remodeling of the sprawling East Campus into this unique Christian ministry here in the shadows of downtown Houston, Texas. The premier 2022 June our summer camps for teens has proven that this phase of ministry has the fingerprints of the Holy Spirit all over it. Praise God. Now, lives of hundreds of teens and sponsors were changed as we witnessed them receiving Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Many of them experiencing a life-changing encounter with the Holy Spirit and being equipped to live free of depression and guilt, abuse and shame. Thousands more were enriched by the live streaming that took place each night by the grace of God we are off and running. Now we are ready to move into the next phase of the vision development and adding the touch of excellence to the grounds and buildings. Now most Christian camps in America are financially supported by much more than the campers registration, but have groups of caring churches and businesses and corporations and partners holding them up. Now this is my appeal to you to become a Love City USA Village Investment Partner with a reoccurring monthly donation which will help secure our future, provide for the upkeep and the ongoing renovation, staffing, program development for children camps and year-round outreach ministry. Now your support will be used for media evangelism, uh, affordable camp registrations, disaster relief when needed, social media ministries, conferences and young adult retreats and men and women's retreat and the Love City Prayer Center Crisis Hotline. Now, you can become a Love City Village investment partner with a reoccurring monthly investment at your level of faith. Remember, it is all of us doing something that brings success. Now here are the various levels, the bronze partnership level of a $30 monthly, the silver partner level with a $52 monthly support, the gold partner level, with a $100 monthly support, and then the platinum partner level with the $200 or more monthly partner support. Now, scripture shows that support of kingdom ministry in its infa stage yields supernatural results, as in the case of Peter allowing Jesus to use his boat in the infant stages of Jesus' ministry, and the widow who supported the prophet Elijah before he goes to Mount Carmel. Now, our goal is to continually expand the Love City USA outreach, offering more campers a chance to experience a life-changing Christian encounter. Now, will you prayerfully consider supporting us in achieving these goals? Please select a level of village partnership investment today and be a part of this life-changing movement. Text LCUSA. VIP to 71441, it's on the screen. Your investment will have changed the lives of the young and the young at heart. Do it today, text L-C-U-S-A-V-I-P to 71441. Now you'll receive some free appreciation gifts and monthly newsletter as a part of the Love City USA family. Do it today. Partners, thank you for your support. All contributions will be used to support the ministries and outreaches of New Light Church as needed. This has been Maximized Living Today.